Hi everyone, in this subdivision surface modeling exercise we're going to do a knuckle joint that is based on a CAD file I found on GrabCAD. As usual I've provided a project file that you can download, so please check the video description for the download link. And the download also contains a couple of renders of the CAD model, you can see one here. And I've just included these in the download so you have a couple of references that you can take a look at if you want to. And I've also prepared a perspective render of the original CAD file. If you open the Cinema 4D start file, you can see that I've put reference images in the top, front and side views. We will start this with the most complicated object which is the eye end over here. The good news is once we've modeled this eye end, we can reuse part of the geometry to create this piece over here. So this is the eye end and this is called the fork end I think. And then we have a pin which is this smaller cylinder up here and a collar which is this one. So let's add a cube to the scene and I'll move it over to, let's move it to about here. And I'll scale this up a little bit. And I'll use even numbers here. So I'll set the size to 230 on all three axes. I'm also going to add one additional segment for each of the axes. And we need these segments so we can mirror this object top to bottom and left to right later. I'll just move this back over to about here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create this cutout here. And if you take a look at this perspective render, you can see these walls are straight, there's no curvature. Originally I tried to do this cutout using a sphere, but the problem is it has a rounding here as well. And we could do that, I guess, but let's stick with what we see in the reference image and we're going to make this wall straight like, like it is on this model here. And the eyepiece, which is actually this one over here, has eight sides. And we also need to make sure that each of these sides has the same width. I'm going to create this cutout using a cylinder. And I'll snap the cylinder to this point here. Actually, we need to snap it over to this point and then rotate it. Minus 45 degrees. And I'm going to line it up with this line here. Try to get as close as possible. And in order to get eight even sides, I'm going to use a helper object. Which is a disc with eight rotation segments. And I'm going to rotate this. and I'll rotate this 22.5 degrees. And we also need to scale this up. And I'll try to get as close as possible to the edges of the cube. The closer we get, the harder it gets to adjust the radius. So I'll just try and use the options I have here in the attributes manager to fine tune this a little bit. We don't need to be super accurate. Let's try five, see what that does. That's a bit much. So something like this should be fine. I'm going to make this cube editable. And let's rename this to I end.
and I'll use the plane cut tool. I have switched it to world. The plane is X, Y. We also need snapping. And I'm going to snap to the corners of the disk we just added and make a cut here and another one here. And then let's switch the plane to Y, Z. And I'll make two more cuts like this. We can get rid of that disk again. And I'll put the eye end in a bool object and add the cylinder. And we get something like this, which actually doesn't look too bad. But we have too many segments here. I want to reduce the polygon count here. So let's go ahead and reduce the rotation segments on that cylinder. And I'll do one, two, three, four. Let's bring this down even a bit further. Because I think something like four segments should be enough. And we also need edges at the center here. So I'm going to add one height segment. I'll try to move it a little bit closer until the points get welded. Something like this. We could also increase the tolerance of the bool object. First of all, we need to switch on create single object. I'm also going to hide the new edges and let's bring the offset up. I think we could move that cylinder over a little bit further. difficult to see. Maybe if I switch off the X and Y axes, I can then fine tune this a little bit more by left clicking and dragging in the viewport. So I'll move that cylinder over until the points get welded. Let's try something like two for the optimize points option here. I'll keep a backup of this just in case. I'll put this in a null object, call it backup. And I'm going to hide this. And let's make our bool object editable. Rename it to I end. And I'll just get rid of these tags. And we can also get rid of most of the object now. So we can delete these points here. and the ones over here. So all that's left now is this. And let's check. We can get rid of this edge here by dissolving it. And I'm going to slide this point over a little bit. So that gives us quads here. And I think I'll just delete these points as well. And next I'm going to make a cut like this over to here. And let's make another one over here. And I want the other edges to go over to this side. And we can dissolve these edges here. And let's go ahead and do the same thing here. And 
then I'll just select these edges and use the even distribution script from the HP modeling bundle. So that's one of the plugins I will be using in this tutorial a couple of times. And I'll be using more plugins. One is a commercial one by Nitro4D, which is called Quad Caps. And one is a free plugin, which is called Points to Circle, I think. Points to Circle. I'm also going to run the even distribution script on these edges here. So we've got something like this. I'll also even out the edges here. And we can get rid of all of these points here. And we're close enough to this curve, so that's looking fine. So let's go ahead and extrude these edges over to about here. And I'm going to move these ones up a little bit or over and then extrude to about here. And over here, we need to select these points and move them forward a bit. That will give us these curved sections here. And then I'm going to extrude these edges forward, scale them down, and move them back to here. And I'll just make a backup of this one. And we can use two symmetry objects now. And make this editable. going to select the edges here at the front and scale these down a bit to about here. And this front piece needs to be circular. And right now we still have this octagon shape. I'm going to convert this to a point selection and run the points to circle script. And this will turn this into a circle and we can scale that up. Let me undo this and also switch on the y-axis here. So I'm going to scale this up to here. And I'll make this even. Let's do 205 by 205. And now we need to close this hole here. And for this, I'm going to use the Nitro Cap plugin. And I'll rotate this around a bit. Just trying to find a setting that I like. I think I'll just select these points here. And rotate these manually. Let's do something like this. And then we can extrude this forward. And move it 
to here. It looks like the radius is a bit big or a bit bigger than it should be. I'll just grow the selection and I'll change this to, let's try 200 by 200. should be fine. Next we need to add this round piece over here and this is also connected to the eye piece or to the eye end so it's all one piece of geometry and for this I'm going to use a tube and the height needs to be 230, which is the height of the cube. And the radius actually is not looking too bad. And I think the reference image is off a little bit. Let's just move this over. To about here. I think we could even bring the radius down a little bit further. But maybe it's just the reference images are not too accurate. Yeah, well, it does look like we could make this a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll just select these polygons here, grow the selection and change that to 195 by 195. One ninety looks good, and I'll just move these points over to about here. And I'm going to change the radius on this one to one hundred and ninety. I'll move these points on the eye end over a little bit. And on that cube, we need an inner radius, but we're going to add that a little bit later. And we also need to change the rotation segment so we can match it up with the geometry of the eye end here. So I'll decrease the rotation segments. getting a little bit closer. I think we'll do 20 here. And maybe just increase that radius a little bit to 195. Because I want to get as close as possible to these edges here. I think I'll just go back to 190, which is closer to what we have in the reference image. And then we're just going to improvise a little bit and, and move the points around so we can match up the geometry. So something like this should be fine. I do keep a lot of backup objects. Because modeling something like this means you have to go back and forth quite a few times and it does help to be able to go back to previous versions of your objects. Now let's go ahead and make this tube editable and I'll optimize it. And what I'll do is I'll use the plane cut tool and let's switch on snapping and I'll snap it to here and make a cut 
on the tube. And we can get rid of most of the geometry. Oh, and I should have added a couple of edges on the side as well, because we do need some geometry here to be able to connect these edges. So I'm using edge cut here with uh, three subdivisions. So we can actually join these objects here. And then I'll select the tube. Uh, let's select both of these and let's get rid of most of the geometry again. So I'll just delete this part and also the bottom part and everything over here. Okay, so that's looking good. Now let's go ahead and move some points around here and I'll start with the tube and snap the points of the tube to the eye end like this and over here we should actually be fine just move this over and snap it again just to be sure and over here I'm going to snap these points and I'll move these ones over and snap them to here and I'll just make sure that these actually line up and we can also weld these points here Let's optimize the object, select the eye end, and I'll just snap these points here. We also need to move these ones over and snap them to the points on the tube. And we can get rid of some of the geometry here. So on the eye end, we don't have any polygons here. But on the tube, we can select these ones and delete them. So now we can select both of these objects and use connect objects and delete optimize the object and it looks like I deleted the edges over here I'll just extrude them down and move them to zero and apparently we have an issue on this corner here and I've just used the subdivision surface object to see how the mesh deforms. So it seems we need to weld a couple of points. So I'll just select these and we only have one point here and here. We do have two here so I'll just weld these together. Same here and the same over here. And let's subdivide that again. And that is looking a lot better. And that's the eyepiece pretty much finished except for the control edges. But before I add the control edges, I'm going to make a copy of this. And I'll also run the even distribution script on some of these edges again. So 
So this is our I end. I'll keep a backup of this. And I'll make a copy and this will be the fork end. I'm going to hide this for now. And for the I end, I'm going to do a phone break selection, select all the edges. And it looks like I have everything that I need. And we can now do a solid bevel on these. And well, let's try an offset of nine. It depends on how soft you want the edges to be. Maybe I, I'll even bring this up to 10. Let's subdivide this and see how that looks. Yeah, well, 10 may be a bit soft. Maybe I'll stick to 9 or 8. Subdivide this again. So I think 9 actually looks fine. And there's a couple of things we need to clean up. Over here, we can dissolve these edges. And over here, I'm going to add another edge loop, but I think I'll use edge cut here only one subdivision and I'll scale these out to to about here maybe and I'll make a couple of cuts one from this corner point over to this point and one here and I'm going to make another one here and then we can dissolve these edges here and these ones and I've added this extra edge loop so I can keep that pole away from the edge on the inside here and we could move this point over a little bit use a symmetry object. Let's add another one and change the mirror plane to X, Z. And I'll make this editable. And there's one more change that we need to make. And I should have made that before I added the control edges. We need to increase that radius here. First of all, I'm going to scale these edges up a bit further. Let's scale these ones up uniformly to about here. So I hope I'm doing this right. Oh, we should have selected the edges at the bottom as well. Let me just delete the bottom of this object. So let's get rid of all of these points here. And then I'm going to scale up these edges here. And I'll make them a little bit wider than this part here. And then we can select these edges and scale those up. And for these, I want an even number for the radius. Let's do 305. 
by 305. And let's do 320 for these ones. Also scale them on the y-axis, which is not a good idea. So we'll just have to do that again. So three five by three five and three twenty by three twenty. So that does look a little bit better. I think I want these corners to be a little bit rounder. So I'm going to move these edges forward a little bit, scale them down. And I'll get rid of this half as well. And I'll slide these ones over a little bit. Something like this. Just straighten out the geometry a little bit. and let's add two symmetry objects again. I'll switch one to X, Z and the other one to X, Y. Let's make this editable. slight issue here. It looks like some of the points are not at the center. So I'll just select these ones, scale them down to zero, and optimize the object. Subdivide. And I think that's looking good. And what we could also do to even out the geometry is we could add a couple of edges here. And I think we have a similar issue here on the side. So before I do that, let's just go to the side view. And I'll select all of these points here, scale them down to zero and optimize. So like I said, in order to even out the geometry a little bit more, we could add 
some edges here. here and here and end up with something like this. So let's continue and model the fork end. And let's see for this one I also want to reset the object axis to the center of the Cinema 4D grid because that is the pivot point of this object. So let's grab the fork end. And for this one, I'll also move the object axis to the center. And let's rotate this around 180 degrees. I'm also going to rotate it 180 this way. And I'm going to reset the object axis. And we can get rid of all of these points here. All we need is this front part and I'll move this over and it should be a perfect fit over here. I'm going to extrude these edges back to about here and then we need another tube or maybe let's just reuse the one that we started with and I'll just set this to minus Z and I'll move it over to about here. The inner radius needs to be half the height of this torus here so we can fit these two objects seamlessly onto each other. So the inner radius needs to be 230 divided by 2. Let's move this back a bit to about here and let's change the outer radius. And I'll make this one 200, yeah, let's do 270 maybe. Okay, so that looks fine. And I already moved the fork end into a very good position, it seems. I'll just select these points and snap them to the torus and for this I'm going to move the modeling axis and in order to do that I'm using a new free plugin that I've just discovered. It's not a new plugin, it's actually an old one and you can do the same thing with this plugin that you can do with these sliders only it's a little bit faster so I can add or move the object axis with one mouse click or reset it to the center with one mouse click without having to move these sliders down here all the time. So I'm going to snap these points to the torus if I can. It doesn't seem to work too well. Let's do something like this for now. And I'll reset the axis to the center. So all of these sliders here are at zero again. And for this torus we need a couple more rotation segments. So let's see how many we have to use. Should be an even number. 36 is a bit much. 32 looks about right. or 30. I've got 30 rotation segments and that should be fine. Yeah, 30 it will be. And we also need some height segments for this one. We'll do four to match it up with the geometry of the fork end. 
and I think we can make this editable now. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll optimize this object and then let's get rid of the bottom part and of this part over here. And I'll just select these edges and extrude them over and scale them down. And I'll move them to here maybe. And we can also get rid of this part of the object. And now we can line up uh, the points with the points on the fork end. So I'll just select these ones and snap them to here. Let me undo that. I'll just move these forward a little bit further without snapping. I try to get as close as I can. We need to delete these polygons here. Let's optimize the object again. And I think we can now select both of these and use connect objects and delete. Optimize again. Let's get rid of these tags. Next I'm going to add the object up here, which will be another torus. I'm going to reuse the one from before. Let's move this up. And it already has the radius that it needs. Just switch off the I end for now. So the radius is fine, we just need to make the inner radius bigger and we need to bring it to here. So this is where the pin goes in and this part around here will be the collar. That is this part here. And we have a hole going through both of these and the pin goes down through the object and this part down here is part of the pin. It's like the head of the pin that sits on the bottom surface here and holds this in place. And I think we can stick with 20 rotation segments for this one. I just make this editable. And I'll select the points at the top and use axis extension to line these up with the fork end. I'll just try this again. Okay. And let's switch off the eye end and I'm going to select the bottom points and snap it to the eye end like this. 
and we can also get rid of half of the object so let's delete this part and then all we need to do is connect the fork end to that tube let's delete these two polygons here select both of these objects and use connect objects and delete and then we can use the polygon pen and connect the geometry and something went wrong over here I'll just undo that and try again make a cut from this point to here and that means we can get rid of these edges and of the ones at the bottom and I'm going to move these points to about here so we're getting this curve here maybe let's make this a nicer curve just optimize the object because I saw some points floating in midair okay so that's looking good I do want to get rid of the pole on this edge here so I'll just select these edges here switch off the eye end so we can see things a little better I'll just connect these edges here and I'll also connect these edges and then we can connect these points and these ones and get rid of this edge shouldn't have deleted this one okay and we need to adjust the points here to make this curve nice and smooth I'll just run the even distribution script on these and we have the same pole down here I'll just connect these edges and these ones and then just weld these points edges down dissolve these ones and these ones select these edges and use edge cut with two subdivisions
Let's put this in a subdivision surface object. And I think that's looking good. I'll make a backup copy. Just cleaning things up a little bit. And let's go to edge mode. And before I do anything else, let me just check whether these points are all at the center, which they aren't. So I'll just zero these out on the z-axis and optimize. And I'll do a phone break selection. And then do a solid bevel, same offset I used before, which is nine centimeters. And let's switch that to uniform. Oh, let's keep it at the default. And I'll dissolve these edges here. And over here, I'll just select all of these edges. I could just do a ring selection. Connect these edges. Then I'll make a cut from this corner point over to here, another one here, and a third one here. And then we can dissolve these edges here to get a nice and clean corner. And I did screw something up here. I'll just connect these points and then get rid of these edges here and slide this point over a little bit. So that's looking fine, but I think like before I'm going to make this corner a little bit softer. And sliding these edges is not working. So I'll just move them. And I'll move these edges forward a little bit. these points forward and slide these edges up a little bit and this point and I think that is looking a little bit better So let's put this in two symmetry objects. I'll switch one to X, Z, and the other one to Z, Y, no, X, Y. Let's make this editable. And that is our finished fork end. And something's looking funky over here. And I already know what it is. We need to select the points here at the center. Just scale them down to zero and optimize 
Let's have a look at the top view. Everything seems to be fine here. Okay, so that's looking good. Next, we're going to add the pin at the center. I'll do this in the right view. We also need to add this hole in the pin and the collar. But first of all, let's do the pin. So I'll add a cylinder and let's change the height. Let's move it up to here. And I'll do 765. I don't want any caps on this one. Let's increase the radius, make it 95. And I'll give it 20 rotation segments. Hopefully that will be enough. And let's make this editable. And I'll just close the polygon hole up here. Actually, I'm going to use that plugin by Natural 4D to do that. So I'll create caps over here. And let's see, the rotation looks fine. And I'll just do the same thing down here. Let's have a look at the top view. I'll just try that again. And let's just turn it. It's not really consistent. You know what? I'll just go to edge mode and ring select these edges and connect them and I'll just delete the bottom part and then use the symmetry object to mirror this over so we're getting consistent geometry here and I'll rotate this around a bit let's do 10 No, actually, let's keep it the way it is for now until we have that hole in there. I'll just make this editable. I won't make it editable because honestly, I still don't like the geometry up here. So sorry about that. I'll just remove these polygons again, optimize and I'll use that nitro cap. Again. Until I have something that I like a little bit better. And I think I'll do 12. because I can't seem to get these lines parallel with with the grid. And I think it's because of the number of rotation segments we have for this cylinder. Well, that may be a reason, I'm not sure. In any case, Now I have something I can live with and we can continue. I'll make a loop cut down here 
and select these edges and I will snap them to the bottom of the other object here and let's move these edges up that is looking good and what we're also going to do right away is select these polygons and I'll just extrude these out to about here and let's do a radius of 300 by 300 And I'll loop select these edges and just stitch and sew them. And I'm going to scale these ones up to get a more even grid, something like this. And because we need to use different settings for the bevel we're going to add for the main object and for the small hole we'll have to use a smaller bevel for this one we might as well go ahead and add the control edges right away I'll just delete this edge here and then do a fong break selection and I'll add a solid bevel using the same offset I used before which is 9 centimeters Let's add another cylinder. I'll move it up to here and change the orientation to plus X. And we need to scale this down. give it a radius of 23 and I'm only going to use eight rotation segments for this one and that should be enough and I'll add two more loop cuts let's change the height of this cylinder so it penetrates the object and then I'll use a bool object and we also need to ring select these edges and connect them and I'll just select these ones and snap them to the center of the small cylinder and if we do it like this we get a cleaner bevel we don't need to hide the edges on this one so this is the pin I'll make a backup copy and we're going to need that cylinder again so I'm going to drag this out and hide it for now and I'll make this pin bool object editable and let's see I'll just 
loop select these edges here and then add a solid bevel let's try three or four I think I'm going, going to use four let's put this in a subdivision surface object and we should probably change a few things here one problem we're having is that these edges here are very close together on that curved surface and that means we're getting a crease here so I'll select these edges actually I might as well select these in the front view using tolerance selection so I'll select these edges and these ones and I'll connect them so I've just added a point on these four edges and then we can weld these points to get more distance between these edges and I'll scale these points a little bit So if we subdivide this, we will get a much cleaner, a much cleaner look for this. We have a lot of distortion here because we don't have any edges between this one and this one down here. I'll just add a couple of segments. And I'll connect these edges down here so when we subdivide this it's going to be a very even mesh so that's looking good the last object we'll create is the color up here and for this I'm going to use another tube Let's go ahead and move this up and the inner radius of this tube needs to be 95 which is the radius of the top cylinder or of a pin rather and let's go ahead and decrease the outer radius to about here Let's do 150 and actually this looks a little bit bigger so I'll do 155 and I'll do 20 rotation segments which is the same that I used for the pin and let's make this editable and optimize it and let's see do I have solar mode switched on yes I'll snap these points to the bottom here and I'll just move these points down and let's select all the points and I'll move the axis down to here and then scale this to 80 so we're using even numbers again I'll just reset the axis and Let's grab the backup of that small cylinder we made earlier. Let's increase the size. I'm going to ring select these edges and connect them. And then I'll select them. And I'm going to snap them to the center of the small cylinder and now we can put this in a bool object create a single object I'm not going to hide the edges and before I make this editable we could again 
do a foam break selection and add a bevel to the tube as it is. And for this one, I'm going to use nine again. Let's switch off that pin for a second. I think I make that radius too small. I'll change that in a second. First of all, let's make the uh, bool object editable. So this is the color. Let's get rid of these tags. Loop select the edges around the holes. And I'll use a solid bevel again with an offset of four this time. And I should have added an edge loop at the center here too. I'll just go back a few steps to before I converted the bool object. And I'll ring select these edges and connect them and then select them and I'll snap them to the center of that small cylinder as well. So now we can make this editable. And add our bevel to these holes. And I don't think we need to make any changes here. Let's put this in a subdivision surface object. I'll just switch every, everything else off for now. So I can do a render of just this object. And it's looking pretty clean, so. That's good. I think we're done. This is our color. And I'm going to put each of these in its own subdivision surface object. rename each of these and we could maybe rotate these objects a little bit and let's grab the fork end and rotate this over a little bit something like this and there we go that is our finished knuckle joint i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial thanks for watching everyone and i'll see you again soon